to today's technique tutorial. My name is Samantha Wilchire and today we're going to be talking about using geometry in perspective for construction. So in the past we've explored using simple geometry for construction but what we haven't talked about is actually putting it in perspective and thinking in terms of three dimension. So you'll see in the image on the right on my slide, um, I have a portrait that I was working on, which was under construction. And I've kind of combined using a simple geometry approach and a geometry in perspective approach. And around the nose and the eye socket in particular, you can see that I've really thought about the, the top and the sides of the nose and the fact that the eye socket is concave and where the sides of it um, are so that I can understand how it turns in space. So today we'll be going through our lesson objectives, our activity equipment. Um, we'll be discussing what is the geometry in perspective construction method. Um, we'll be using uh, that method to build an image together, um, just a really simple image today of a nose. And then we'll be concluding and going through our references and further activities. All right, our goals for today are to see in new ways as an artist using simple geometry, and we want to put that geometry into perspective today. Um, we want to work on achieving more accurate proportion by simplifying forms down into their basic building blocks. We're looking to improve our realism and we're looking to understand new ways to begin artworks. Um, and you'll see on my slide, I have an image of a statue um, where the face is broken down deliberately into that simple geometry, into those really basic building blocks for us. All right, so the equipment you'll need today includes a printout of the nose featured later in this presentation or a picture of any nose of your choosing. Um, you'll need a light HB pencil. You'll need a hard and soft eraser, uh, some drawing paper, and that can be any drawing paper. It doesn't have to be fancy today. Um, this is just going to be a practice piece uh, to build these skills. It's not going to be a final rendered drawing when we're finished with it, unless you choose to continue with it in your own time. Uh, you'll also need any drawing material of your choosing for marking up your reference image. So if you've got a darker printout, you might want something like a colored pastel or a colored marker that you can see really easily on top. Uh, and you can also have a skewer, ruler, piece of string or knitting needle to do some comparative measuring today if you wish to. Um, we are not going to be focusing on measuring today though so that's not a strict requirement it's just if you already have an understanding maybe from watching other videos in this series or from your classroom tutor and you'd like to apply some of your extra knowledge to this exercise so what is the simple geometry in perspective method or robot method you might sometimes hear it called um the simple geometry method is about understanding our uh, our subject not as a flat shape, but as building blocks as simple three dimensional shapes rather than simple two dimensional shapes that we've already practiced together. And you'll see here that in How to Draw What You See by Rudy D. Rayner, he's done a great diagram of a nose on a different angle than that which we'll be drawing together today, um, which really neatly demonstrates how we can think about that nose as a really simple block. Um, and so what we really want to know is how this form turns in space. We want to understand what would happen if we reached out and we actually touched that nose. Um, and the best way I think to do this is to actually imagine that you're building the subject out of literal toy, toy blocks for children or you're imagining it as a robot, you're picturing Iron Man when you're looking at that face, rather than thinking about it as uh, an organic face with curves. So let's practice using some geometry in perspective together. Um, screenshot and print this slide to follow along with me if you'd like, or grab your own reference image. Because this is not a video about measuring, you're going to end up with a nose, um, not this nose specifically. It will be inspired by this nose. So if you particularly care about um, exactly replicating the nose that you are um, going to be drawing today, you're definitely going to want to be using some measuring techniques in addition to this skill set. All right, so the first step that we're going to be completing is we'll be using that drawing tool that will show up on our printout to mark the biggest shapes on our reference image that we can see. And this starting point really is um, more like our two-dimensional process. 
Um, and what we're going to do is we'll then map with our pencil these shapes on our page once we've identified them on our reference picture. We really want to make sure that we're working from the largest shapes into the smaller shapes. Um, and when we begin this method, we begin it in the exact same way that we would any other method. We want to stop thinking about this as being a nose and we want to say that's a rectangle, that's a trapezium, that's a triangle. All right, let's talk about now putting simple geometry that we've practiced using in the past into perspective. So we've talked about simple geometry before. We've also tried using um, simple curved lines and curved shapes like circles and ellipses to construct before. Um, we've also played with using an envelope method. Um, and now we're going to try um, a technique which really forces you to think about things as having three dimension rather than being flat. So if we wanted to, we could totally come into a nose like this and use our circular basic, basic shapes to create a sensation of where that nose is going to sit on our page. But what I would like to do instead today is something a little bit more sophisticated. Um, so instead of that, we're going to be thinking about the nose as being almost like a rooftop shape. So we're going to think about the bottom of our nose as being a bit of a trapezium, but it's going to have a flat surface underneath. If you think about your nose as being a shelf, it has an underneath side and then it has a front side. And so when we're wanting to play with that front side, we can now think about the tops of our nostrils. So we can come in and make them some little trapeziums for the tops of our nostrils or kind of half trapeziums. Then we want to think about the um, cartilage that forms the kind of front base of our nose um, and how that attaches to the rest of our face. And again, it's like a rooftop. It comes out, it has a top, and then it goes down again. So you've got a slope on one side, a flat top, and then a slope on the other side. Again, it's that trapezium shape. In order to create that, I'm going to pull a line up the side of the nose. And I want to think about the sides of the nose versus the top of the nose. And then I could think about the sides of that bit, that kind of knobbly bit on the end of the nose versus um, the top. So top side, side, top, side, side. There's never a part of the nose where we're not thinking about it in terms of the way that it moves in space. And then we might think about the way that that's going to attach then way up here. We can also think about where, where's the top of my nostrils and I tell Telltale sign when you're looking for tops and sides of things is going to be the way that light plays on that particular object is going to be a big clue. But also seeing um, whatever it is that you're drawing in real life is going to help us to think about three dimension as well. We know, for example, with the nose, that if we touch our nose, we're going to be able to feel the top and the sides of the um, bridge of our nose. We know that we're going to be able to touch and feel that underneath shelf of our nose where our nostrils are going to sit. We can also create the dip for our nostrils. So I've mapped, I've mapped in what I think that's doing in terms of the way that it travels in space. I've given myself a better understanding of how that's going to work. The next step is going to be for me to now create this nose. Now, today we're not going to be using our measuring techniques. We're not going to be using our proportion techniques like we normally would to create an exact lightness because I don't want exactly this nose. I'm happy to produce any nose today. Um, if you would like to produce this exact nose or if you have a picture of a nose beside you and you would like to exactly replicate it, you can integrate comparative measuring techniques. You can flick your eyes back and forth by sight to try and see whether there's any differences that you can spot. You can integrate all of these other skills that we've been through through our other videos. 
So to start with, I'm going to decide where I would like to place the base of my nose. And remember, construction should be incredibly light. I go much darker in my videos because I want you to be able to really clearly see my lines on camera. Your lines should be very, very, very light because we want to be able to move them. We're not committed to these lines yet. We want to be able to put them wherever it is that we would like them to be. So I'm going to start with this really thin area which is going to be the underside of my nose. Where is that shelf? Then after that, I want to think about my rooftop. So I'm going to go up from kind of the middle of my nose and I want to create what will turn into that bridge. Remember that when we're constructing, we want to try and have less lines rather than more. So you'll see, I went over those lines a few too many times for my liking. I don't want them to get confusing. Um, so I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna try and do them in as few lines as possible. There I go. So there's that top of my nose. The next thing I want to understand is where is that knobbly bit of the center of my nose going to be? I can just put a little line for now versus the bridge versus where it connects to the face on this particular person. On other people, like uh, on this nose down here, you'll notice that it's not quite so harsh the way that that bumps out at the very end. Noses are fascinating, noses are all different. And so no two noses will ever be exactly the same. All right, now that we've got our really basic shapes down, um, we want to add more guidelines in to remind ourselves of where the sides, top and bottom of our nose are. If you think about your nose, it's got a ledge underneath, it's got a front surface, it's got a top surface. We really want to differentiate between those different zones in our drawing. So you're going to think about your nose a little bit like the rooftop of a house. Um, you're going to pretend you're up in an aeroplane looking down at the top of a building. Um, and we're going to indicate in particular where those sides are versus where that top is. Um, you can also at this stage add any further details which might be missing and apply any corrections if you can see some that you might need to make. Right, now I want to find the light. In the middle, I also think I might bring that part of my nose down just a little bit. And I know that the sides are going to slope down because it's a rooftop. It should feel like you're in an aeroplane looking down at a house when we're constructing a nose using simple geometry in perspective. Then I want to create the bridge as it would appear up here. And it's going to slope down on each side. Then I want to create the triangular shape or the trapezium shape, which is going to form that center bit of skin and cartilage that sits in between our two nostrils. And now I'm going to also go ahead and find this little section right here where our nostril is going to ever so slightly turn upwards. Because then I will have the sides of my nostrils. And if I really want a person to look exactly like the person I'm trying to draw, I have to measure every element of this if I want an exact replica, an exact likeness. If I want just, just pretty close, then I can totally achieve just pretty close using my sight methods rather than measuring. Um, but when we're really looking for photorealism, that's when measuring becomes very important. Right. I wanna know then when this is going to turn to attach to the rest of the face. 
If anything's feeling out of whack, I can go in and fix it. And then I also know that my nostril on each nose is going to sit right in here. And now we're going to be making our final corrections and softening our edges. So to start with, um, I usually like to, at this stage, erase any markings I've drawn on my reference or grab a new fresh version of that reference that hasn't been marked up because sometimes the markings that you put in for your basic structure might actually cover up soft curves and subtle details that you're going to want to see in detail. Um, so we're going to want to put anything in that's missing and we're definitely going to want to soften our edges to create a natural feeling and to create those lovely curves so that we don't um, have a remaining robot nose on maybe a, a for the most part natural looking face that would look very strange uh, if you are aiming for accuracy then it's really important that you flick your eyes back and forth to spot the difference at this point between your drawing and your reference um, and it's also really great at this stage to use any comparative measuring on any last little areas that you might not be so certain about because we really don't want those areas to remain incorrect when we might go and put dark shadows on top that would then be hard to erase to make those corrections later on once I've got my really boxy, uh, simple shapes in perspective, and remember that in perspective means that I should feel like I can see every side of it. I should feel like I have an understanding of how it turns in space when I just look at my construction before I've even got any tonal work on yet. So once I've got that base, what I can do next is come in and I can make any bits which should be curvy, nice and curvy now. So, and for this step, I tend to erase my construction on my reference picture. Even did you are using construction on a reference picture, um, which you may well not always. Sometimes you might be drawing somebody from life and you might need to be seeing these shapes without having the ability to draw them onto something. And so that's why it can be really, really helpful to practice in this way first before drawing something from life. So now I could come in and I can curve any edges which might need curving. I see that that attaches to this nostril. So I'm using it as a guide, even though for me, this is a made up nose today. That's not designed to be a hyper-realistic representation of anyone in particular. Where else can I see it curves? I can see that this area in here is gonna be a little bit more curvy and a little bit more shallow. I may have pulled that little bit that sits in between the two nostrils down too far. And remember this stage for you should be very light as well. Always go lighter than what I am on your camera. I mean on your screen. I can see that that's gonna actually be curvy. On the tip right there. And I can see that we're going to have curves here. And here. I can also come in and I can see a little crease. If I can see anything around the face that might be, if I can see anything around the nose, my apologies, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pop that in as well, if it might be helpful. And there I have it, there is my beginning construction of a nose using geometry in three dimension. Give it a go, see how you do. Once you've tried creating any nose, see if you can integrate your measuring as well and try and create exactly that nose if you can. You also might find as you approach this method that you think in terms of linear perspective. So when we're constructing using simple shapes in perspective, we might come across a situation where we need to use some of our knowledge about vanishing points. If you haven't yet seen the video on linear perspective, you may like to watch this next to support um, your new skill that you built in this video today. 
And if you'd like to explore these skills further, um, find some more simple shapes in perspective. So print out a variety of images and practice drawing the shapes you see with a marker on top of the printouts until you can build up some speed. Uh, and practice makes perfect. So select several of your favorite attempts from that first activity and see if you can follow these through to be completed drawings. And here are our image and academic references for today. Um, feel free to pause and zoom in if you'd like to investigate further. And our long-term goal for this skill set is to practice geometry in perspective construction and combine this skill set with our measuring and correction techniques and tonal work techniques that we've learned in other videos. And we also mentioned before that this can be combined really nicely with an understanding of linear perspective. We also want to eventually decide which construction method or methods, if we're using more than one, might work best for us in our personal practices. Um, so have a go at each one. Make sure to watch the rest of our construction series um, and see which one you seem to gel with best. Thank you so much for your time and as always, happy art making.